uh, with Thomas Bryant. Thomas, thanks for joining us. Um, same drill as we've been doing. Um, if you can please uh, raise your hand uh, using that feature. Um, and then uh, if that's not working for whatever reason, you can always uh, text me uh, or message me directly on here. Um, again, as with Brad, we'll try to get to everybody's questions. Um, so bear with us there. Um, and uh, the recordings of both this and Bradley's session from earlier will be made available uh, later today. So if you need those, just let us know, but they'll be coming out when we put out the uh, announcement for tomorrow's availability. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with Chris Miller. Scott Hall, thank you very much. TV, how you doing, brother? I'm good, my man. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. I'm curious to know what the last four and a half uh, or three and a half months have been like for you uh, mentally and getting your body ready to go down to Orlando at the end of the month. Uh, my, my mindset has been totally tunnel vision of getting my body right, whether it was on the court and uh, especially the weight room, getting the lower body right and upper body. So, you know, just losing body fat, gaining more muscle. And that's exactly what I did. And I've been doing it ever since. You know, my mindset is, has been totally tunnel vision on trying to on trying to help this team no matter what because, you know, me going through that injury, it kind of set me back a little bit, and I need to, you know, bring myself back up to par. Matt? Uh, uh, thanks, Thomas. Uh, Tommy Shepard was saying that he felt like your season was kind of incomplete in a way. What do you think you can – accomplish in the eight games like do you feel like you can maybe make up for some of the lost time early in the season with the injury like is eight games a substantial amount of time to kind of I don't know if redeem yourself is the right word but to to show a strong effort yes for sure eight games is, is more than enough for me to show a strong effort I'm gonna show my I'm gonna show a strong effort throughout the practices being on time throughout these workouts right now and also, when we start scrimmaging, you know, I do that right before we start playing. So that way people know that my mindset, coach knows my mindset, and Tommy knows my mindset of everything that I'm doing. And have you made a decision uh, if you'll head down to Orlando? I am. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Fred? Hey, Thomas, what's going on? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Um, I'm good. Uh, I am. I am wondering uh, how your foot is doing. Is that totally healed? And uh, yes. and and the the word in the street is you have abs now. So <laughs> what, what inspired specifically the the body transformation, and and how do you expect that to show on the court? Well, um, to answer your first question, yes, my foot is fully healed. Uh, I'm 100 percent healed. I've been doing workouts to the max, you know, even more uh, throughout this, you know, for about as soon as the quarantine started, I've been doing that. And uh, yeah, I've been getting better with the core work and the lower body. And then you'll see when we get back out on the court that uh, stronger finishes, you know, nobody bumping me as much as they were before, standing my ground and uh, being a dominant force. Brianna? Hey, TV. Um, so you said that you will be able to, you will be going down to Orlando. Um, Bill just shared with us that he has not made his decision yet. And then we, of course, know that um, Bertans is not going. I mean, what were your thoughts of your processing, whether to go or not to go? And with the um, more details that you guys have been given, what are your thoughts of going into the bubble? Um, me personally, I, I don't like people telling me what I can and cannot do, but I also follow rules as well. So that's one thing about it. You know, some, there's some things you're going to like, there's some things you're not going to like. That's how life is. So you just have to adjust to them. Um, with Bert, with Bertons and Brad not knowing what they're going to do, um, either way, I support them 100%. You know, Bertons feels like what he did was best for him and his family, so you can't get mad at him for that. And Brad's going to do what he feels is best for him and his family as well. Uh, for me personally, going down there to Orlando, it's going to be a, it's going to be another thing of me, you know, proving myself again and uh, coming out the gate to show that I'm fully healthy and can play this game at the top at the top level again as well. 
And also, the um, Tommy Shepard said that there is a high expectation for you going into the bubble. Um, and so, and then there's been a lot of talk about people saying like, oh, the Wizards shouldn't even be going to Orlando. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And being one of the, you know, leaders on the team, what are your thoughts about that? People are going to say what they want to say. They'll see when we get down to Orlando that we've, that we've all been improving and you'll see a spark from us. So people are going to say what they want to say. You know, it's a freedom of speech. People have the right to say what they want. But for me personally, they'll be eating those words. They'll be eating those words. And uh, what was your other question? Oh, um, Tommy Shepard said that he has um, high expectations for you. And mm -hmm. so what are the, and you kind of spoke on it, but what are more of the expectations that you have for yourself? My expectations for myself is going out there and being a dominant force. Like, this team needs me to be and how Tommy wants me to be and how the coach needs me to be. So that's, that's my high expectations going out there, giving, giving all my effort, no matter what it is in order to win the game. Chase. Hey Thomas, hope you're doing well, man. Um, I'm good, man. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, you know, you said you're you're going down there. You think you guys can prove some people wrong. What would it require for you guys to play these eight games out and make the playoffs? Uh, just being all connected out there when we're on the floor and have everybody on the same mindset of, of defense is going to win this game. We're going to score. We're going to score the best of them. We're going to hang in there. But we can't outscore people. We have to. We have to have that mindset of defensively. All of us have to be together as one. And that was my main mindset of changing my mindset throughout the quarantine, of having a defensive mindset from the jump. Don't have it come to me. Have it have it right there right away. You know, and uh, the offensive game is going to take care of itself. We just have to get stops. That's the biggest thing. And I think we will get stops more consistently. Harita? Hey, Thomas, I'm just wondering, do you think it'll be difficult to stay mentally engaged at a certain point because you'll be isolated in a bubble away from your families and just your normal routine? Uh, it could be for most people. For me personally, that just engages me with basketball even more. And my friends will tell you, my family will tell you, like, I've, I've been in such a tunnel vision mindset to where my mind is just strictly on basketball and, and myself and trying to win games. So I feel like it's been official in some ways, but also, you know, guys need, you know, that time to unwind and get away from stuff when, you know, not also be alone, but also be together as one. But I think it'll be a good thing for us because there's really no, not, not too many distractions. Okay, and just a quick follow-up. Guys like Giannis and like Austin Rivers have said that this is going to be one of the toughest championships to win because mm -hmm. of the circumstances. Do you agree with that sentiment or see where they're coming from with that? Oh, yeah, I see where they're coming from with that. No home court advantage like that. <laughs> cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any representative from TAB, TAB Deportes? Yes, um, I just wanted to verify, um, actually ask you, do you think it's going to be a challenge for you playing without fans, not having actually the home court advantage? Do you think it's actually going to be a, a disadvantage for you guys? I don't think really it's going to be a disadvantage. For me, I've, I've been in gyms before where we've played multiple teams that had no fans before. I, I think back to AAU and some high school, college games and everything, but it just makes everything so much, just matter so much more. You know, when you don't have a home court advantage, it feels like it's a it's an even game, no matter what it is, no matter if you're the so-called home team or away team. Thank you. Uh, Fred, I believe you had a second question, go ahead. Yeah, Thomas, I'm just curious because you're you're a you're a skilled offensive big and you like mm -hmm. to be inside, you like to be outside. How how have you been able to I know like one of the things for you is being able to be kind of more of a volume three point guy, things like that. 
I know you've worked on your body, but how over this time have you been able to work on your actual basketball skill beyond just like the Zoom workouts you guys have done? Yeah, I've been able to work on my my overall basketball skill. Um, consistency of my shot making has gone up as well. And uh, just being safe about it, you know, whether it's getting into like a little gym or having a hoop for myself, you know, just making sure that I get the reps in no matter what it is. What 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 is that process been like? Like, do do you do you do private like private stuff with guys over Zoom? Like, where where is the feedback mm -hmm. coming from? The the critiquing that kind of stuff. The feedback and critiquing comes from the Zoom calls and the one or two people that I might have with me, and just working on the mental aspect of the game of when I'm tired. Can you still can you still be consistent on getting a stop or making a shot and if you don't make the shot, then you got to run. So that's even more work right there. So I've been going through that development and mindset of, you know, do I want to run or do I want to make this shot right now? So make the shot. Thanks, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Chris Miller. Thanks, Scott. TV, while I understand and appreciate that you've been laser focused on basketball, obviously there are so many things that's been going on in the world, obviously COVID and everything else that's been going on in the world with uh, George Floyd and, and, and many of these people that have had these encounters with police. How, how have you been able to kind of wrap your mind around all the other things outside of basketball? It's been difficult. It's been very difficult, especially for me and my family. but. For me, I have to be the I have to be the anchor for my family, no matter what it is. And throughout this whole time of, you know, just with the George Floyd things, the coronavirus things, I have to be the anchor for my family, no matter what. Even if I'm upset about it, I have to give a I have to make sure I have the persona of making sure I tell my family it's going to be all right. We're going to be all right, no matter what it is, you know. And uh, it's very difficult, especially just with the racism that's happened and continuing to happen. And it's, it sucks because people always say history repeats itself and it's repeating itself right now, but we have to make a chance. We have to make a change for it to not keep repeating itself. And that's the biggest step that, you know, African-Americans, we African-Americans have to take in order to make sure we get the equality that we need and deserve. Thanks TV. Mm -hmm. Charla? Hey there. Um, I want to ask you, I know the NBA discussing the possibility of allowing players to use that space reserved for their last names on the back of their jerseys to instead mm -hmm. speak out and choose a word or words, you know, making a statement about racial injustice and police brutality. Have you thought about what word or words you would put on the back of your jersey? And what does it mean to you as a player to know that, that your league is backing you and encouraging you guys to, to speak out and use your platform? Me personally, I haven't thought of any names that I've been wanting to put on the back of the jersey. I've been thinking about it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that aspect right now. Uh, for me personally, with the NBA backing us up, I really think it's a great thing. You know, I think it's wonderful that the NBA is backing us up about it and uh, will show us encouragement of having to change our jerseys, you know, the back of our name of our jerseys to to bring out a – to bring out social injustices and uh, to, um, and to show people that you know we stand for equality and the NBA stands for equality as well with us. Thanks, Chase. Thomas. On a related note, uh, Bradley Beal mentioned how he feels for younger players who, you know, maybe don't have the platform he does yet or haven't made the money that he has yet who want to get that stuff to kind of help their own communities and mm -hmm. sort of the conflict that's there. Like maybe you believe in what Kyrie Irving and others are saying, but you know, you don't, you're not in the same position. You want to get to that position. Did you feel that conflict as a young guy who, yes, you've gotten a second contract, but you know, obviously there's more that you can do to get on like the level of a Bradley Beal. Um, <laughs> first, I don't feel there's a lot of steps that I have to do before I get to Bradley Bill standpoint, but yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've gone up in a level to where like I can make a little bit of more of a stand and have more of a, have more of a say in what I, 
of what I want to do and how I want to do it. But for guys that are that don't have a platform like Brad or me or can't stand out as much as as a Brad or me or John, you know, come. We're all about helping out, and uh, we also talk to our guys. We tell us we tell our guys to like if you want to say something, if you want to, you know, just vent or try and do something that's nonviolent. And that is going to help us and put us in a glorified light as well and put you in a glorified light. You know, we're all we're all behind it because we want to have peace. We want to have equality. We want to have everything that that goes that goes right with everything and make sure it stays on that path consistently. So no matter what, we're going to help out in any way, shape or form. Matt, I see your hand raised. I didn't know if that meant you had a second question or you just didn't take it off there. Oh, I just didn't take it off. Sorry, I'm good. Okay, in that case, we'll move back to Charlotte. Same thing, do you have a second question? Oh, no, I didn't. I just didn't take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else with a second question? I see a couple more people, but I didn't know if that was just left over from before. If so, go ahead. No? Okay, well, great. Well, thank you, Thomas, for your time. Uh, this afternoon, uh, again, we'll send the uh, the links out to both Thomas and Brad's uh, session from today here in a little bit, and uh, we'll also send information on tomorrow's availability as well. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank y'all.